Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could all join us today. Please join us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of this day. We thank you for the blessings, Father, that our cups truly do runneth over, even in this time of trouble in this world today. Our cups truly do runneth over, and we owe it all to you, Father. Just pray. I just pray that this world would learn, would listen of, of, of what's going on and understand, but they cannot understand. Some, yes, we know you have placed blinders over them. And this isn't the time to, to teach that, but this is the time to give you thanks, even for those blinders, because that will keep people from failing. That would fail miserably. But those that you have enlightened, Father, those where the light shines in their hearts and in their minds, Father, we can overcome every adversity that comes our way, and we owe it all to you, and we thank you for that. Father, we have these unspoken prayers before you at this time. You know every heart, every need, every wish, every dream, every concern. And we thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for answering them always in perfect season. Also, before you, Father, we pray for Mrs. Holden, for KC, Mark, and Marky. And all these, Father, we ask that you lead, that you guide, that you direct. And we also pray for Rachel, that you direct and that you lead and that you guide. We will always give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for each and every one, Father. We also pray, dear Lord, for all the families being affected by this world and what's happening in this world today. There are so many issues, so many agendas, so, and people have, have such passion in what they're doing. But, Father, if, it, if they would just have an ounce of that passion directed towards you, everything would go for the better but we know dear lord this will not take place until during the millennium and after the millennial period but father in the meantime we still have those souls that you care about and that have an opportunity of repenting and accepting the lord jesus christ as their savior and i pray dear lord that you will lead us by their path or them by our paths that we can be used as thy servants to lead, guide, and direct them to you. And we pray this earnestly, Father. And we pray for all those who have come and gone from our chapel. Wherever they are, whatever they are doing, we pray they have not forsaken thy word, and they will return to the sheepfold soon. As well as we pray for Israel and our nation, for thy kingdom to come, knowing that it will be thy will that will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we say, Come, Lord, come. And we pray for those first responders every day. They're on the front lines helping your children. We pray for their safety, especially in this day and age. And we pray for our military who are in arms way, or who are about to go into arms way, for their safety and speedy return home. And as always, Father, we pray for the lost those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see. I pray that you open up our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. Okay, we're back into Psalms. Psalms 15 today. Um... This is a Psalm of David, of course. And we're going to be dealing uh, with, really, have you ever asked the question, well, who's going to be in the kingdom? Who's going to be with our Father? Now, we could easily say, well, the elect will be with our Lord, and um, also during the millennial period we'll be teaching with Him, because we've studied that and we understand that. But it goes uh, in more detail today who's going to be with our Lord. And it's vitally important to know who's not going to be with the Lord uh, in the coming days. So with that being said, Psalms 15, verse 1, and it reads, Lord, who shall abide or who shall sojourn in thy tabernacle? 
What would be God's tabernacle? Anybody? God's tabernacle. Well, what? we are. We yes, are of yes, but uh, let's let's look at it on a superficial level. What what would now? Remember who we're talking about here. We're talking about David. David is praying this prayer. David at this point knows the first five books, the Pentateuch. So what would he call the tabernacle? Because they had the tabernacle there. The temple. I think. The temple, yeah. right. It wasn't a physical structure, but it was a tent at this point. But listen, he says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? What's his holy hill? Jerusalem. Okay. In other words, who's going to be the who's going to be there, Lord? It's a good question. Verse two. So the Lord answers David, and David brings this forth. That's why David brings these words forth. He that walketh uprightly. Now stop there just for a moment. It's no different today. You want to be with the Lord. You, A lot of people say that they, they love Christ. Well, Christ says, then do what I say. You know, he who loves me obeys my commandments and does them. That's why it says, he that walketh uprightly, meaning doing what's right according to our Father's word, and, there's another exception here, and worketh righteousness. What does that mean, to work righteousness. Well, whatever you do, you do what's right. You treat others fairly, you, you, you're you honest. According to you? No, according to God's law. According to God's law, according to his words, because he's given us a book of instruction to follow. Uh, see, we don't have to blindly say, well, I wonder if what I'm doing is right. Well, we know whether we're doing what's right or wrong. But here lies the problem. People don't want to pick up the Word anymore and study it. They want to be told what the Word says. So what is that saying? They want to hear what man has to say about God instead of what God has to say about man. They don't want to put the time in. You know, well, before the camera came out, I talked about you know practicing the guitar again. You know, well, you know, even though I played for thirty plus years. If you don't play for a while, you, your, your, you know, your, your fingers get soft, you don't have any calluses, and your, your dexterity is off. Well, it's the same thing as if you, get, uh, you may have walked with the Lord and accepted Him as your uh, Savior and uh, studied His Word and prayed. But if you turned from that and walked away from that for whatever reason, Guess what? The same kind of thing happens to your body and your mind and your heart. You're just not you're just not in tune anymore. It's like you're walking the steps, but you're out of step. You know, you just things aren't going as well as they used to. And then you come to the point and say, Well, I wonder why. Well, the Lord tells you why. What I said just a few moments ago, you forsake him, he will forsake you. In other words, he doesn't want to forsake you. But he'll give you what you want. If you want to walk without him, he's going to allow that to happen. Because he knows that if you do walk without him, that you will be susceptible to the world and all the world wants to throw at you. And the world is negative. It's not going to be forever that way. But only when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and reigns again, and during that millennium and after the millennium is the eternity will everything be put right but until then we're going to have to deal with this stuff but we don't have to deal with it alone that's the key thing here we don't have to do it alone but there is certain things as a Christian that we must do in other words we got to be right with him we we got it we got to believe in what he says do you realize there's some Christians, and I use the term loosely here, there's some Christians that believe that this Bible is obsolete. That's why you can go to a lot of these churches today and, and, and the words are up on the uh, big screen. You don't even have to take your Bible anymore. You know, they'll tell you what's in the Bible. Well, I'd rather have God tell me what's in His Word 
than man tell me what's in his word. So to work righteousness, righteousness means that you, you've got to work at this every single day of your life. For me to get proficient in, in playing music again, i got to do this daily. It's what it takes for me. Some people, I guess, can just pick it up in a, in a heartbeat, but I can't. So he that walketh uprightly... Now, now, what happens if you want to tabernacle with the Lord? That means be in his house. If you want to be in his holy hill, it says Jerusalem here, but Jerusalem isn't really, spiritually speaking, where is Jerusalem in the tabernacle? You've already mentioned it. Where is it? Yeah. It's in God's children. You know, A lot of people think that a building is going to be rebuilt. Well, the building that was built when Christ rose, and they don't understand that. Because Christ himself said that. That's why he said, in three days I will rebuild this. Well, the three days have long come and gone, hasn't it? Well, when he rose that third day, it was rebuilt at that moment. So he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. In other words, you can't sit on your thumbs. When you learn something... When you, when you go through something, the Lord will give you an opportunity to say something. To who? To someone somewhere about Him and what He's done in your life. It's your personal testimony that you give. Doesn't this also mean basically speaking the truth in your heart? It's basically you're meditating on God's Word for your well, that, that's 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 a deeper understanding of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about firstly is especially being a male Christian. A male Christian will talk about the Lord Jesus Christ dying for their sins. But then you grow and you mature, meaning you get more understanding of our Father's Word. And now, yes, the foundation is Jesus Christ always will be, and that will never change. However. Now you can relate to more things that are happening to you and what you went through. And you can give that testimony to someone. That means you're speaking it. You're speaking the Word of God to other people. Yes, where does it start with? It's got to start first in your heart and in your mind. Because you can transfer heart and mind. Mm -hmm. So, speak of the truth in his heart. Meaning, yes, you got to, you got to think about it. you got to dwell on it. That's why we Sabbath. Sabbath means rest. We rest in the Lord on Sabbath day. Well, guess what? You don't have to wait till the Sabbath day to rest in the Lord. You can rest in the Lord every single day of your life. So every day for you, with understanding and maturity, can be a Sabbath with the Lord. Not just, not just sundown Friday, sundown Saturday. Not just Sunday. Every single day of your life. Well, that's what I got from this, is that you can either have the truth in your heart or you can have bitterness. Mm. And out of your heart you speak, basically. So what comes out of your mouth basically shows what's in your heart. Yes, but listen. What this is saying here is that who shall sojourn, who shall abide in God's house? Mm -hmm. The ones that do this and have this in their mind and in their heart. All the time. Mm -hmm. You say, well, what do you mean all the time? Well, yes, we've got to work. There's certain functions that we do each day in our work that we got to concentrate on that work I'm not talking about let go of that I'm talking about all the other times when you have time for yourself and this is key when you have time for yourself what do you do do you do for self or do you do for selfless in other words you're not being self or selfish anymore your free time is wanting to help others or be there for others. And that could be in the home. That could be outside the home. That could be anywhere. But the thing is, you're no longer thinking about yourself. It's important to you to help God's children in whatever capacity he's allowed you to do that. You know, that, you know just us coming here and meeting is helping not yourself. It's helping others to grow because we all we're all here on the same 
page and we make comments and we're reading it together and we're studying together and 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 um, we've even come to the conclusion on certain things over the years of maybe a different look at what we were going down a path one way and then somebody says well wait a minute now this means this to me like what you were talking about a deeper understanding of the same word so we're helping one another are we not Verse 3, he that backbiteth, oh, now listen to the full word, he that backbiteth not, in other words, you're not a backbiter. What's a, what's a backbiter? What's a backbiter? It talks badly about other people. Malicious. They're, they're, they have a, a, a malicious, a malicious thinking, a malicious attitude. You know, and it's, but it says, he that backbiteth not with his tongue. That means they're not this way. Nor doeth evil to his neighbor. Nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Now again, we're talking about those that will be in the tabernacle with the Lord and his holy hill. You cannot be a backbiter. You cannot be a person who's vindictive, who's malicious. You say, well, why would the Lord say that? Because there's a lot of people that are, that think they're walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like what we were talking about before the camera came on. you got all these people right now running around with all this agenda going on. And they're being malicious people. I don't know if you saw the thing last night, and it's been on the news for... I guess a couple of weeks now, but there's this old couple walking across this, this, this street, this intersection, and there's all these people just yelling and screaming at them. And this guy, I guess he's with both hands, he's, as they call, flipping them the bird. <laughs> and this old couple, and she's, you could tell they're scared to death. What's, what's their agenda? Towards those two elderly people. Now, of course, this is just one blip, and it could have been anything going on. You know, I, those elderly people could have invoked it all before the camera came on. And the, why do I say that? Because I remember I learned this as, as a young teenager uh, um, during the Watts riots in Los Angeles Times. There was a big um, picture on the front page of this elderly black lady sitting on a bus bench. Just, just innocent, just sitting there. And there was a police officer behind her with one of his batons up in the air. And the caption was, uh, police officers beating black innocent people. Well, it turns out what it was, when the guy took the picture, the police officer had just finished protecting that woman, and he was putting his baton back in his holder. But it appeared that he was getting ready to come down and crack her on the back of the head behind her. Now, why did that stick with me? Because the Lord had that stick with me to realize that just because you see a picture, or even a video today, unless you see all of it, you don't know what's going on. You just hear what they tell you mm -hmm. is going on. Now, here, here lies the thing with our Father. When you're walking with our Father and you're doing what He says, and that's and you're you're work you're walking uprightly, and you're working righteousness. What Father gives you is and inside information of what's going on between the lines. It's called godly discernment. And you may see something that everybody else sees. You may hear something that everybody else hears, but you hear it at a deeper level. In other words, you're not just assuming what this world's giving you. Now you have true insight. That's why, that's why the Word tells us that when you're walking with the Lord this way, to, from the world, you're considered a peculiar person. They don't understand why you're not jumping on their bandwagon. They don't understand why you're not 
uh, following their agenda. You're following, not your agenda, you're following God's. And that's what's important. This is what David has learned, and this is what David is showing here. That's why it says, in whose eyes, verse 4 says, in whose eyes a vile person is uh, contemned. A treat, that means treat or regard with, with contempt. Uh, these are the ones that, that won't inherit the kingdom of God. You say, well, you're judging. No, our Father's word is showing us those that are walking with the Lord and those what happens to those that don't walk with the Lord. But, it says in verse 4, it continues, He honoreth them that fear the Lord. Does that mean scared of them? No. Mm -hmm. This fear means revere the Lord. Love Him. Love His word and everything uh, that comes with that. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. What, what, what does that mean? He that sweareth to his own hurt. What do you think that would mean? That would be talking about if you're put in a stance to follow God or follow man and you stand and say no. Even though you might suffer a penalty in this world for it. Before you got here, it's just like the thing I was talking about at, at, at uh, my employment where I had a Bible sitting behind me and I was told last night, oh, don't let them see that Bible because uh, when, when I was doing my studies, somebody upstairs complained and I almost lost my job. To which, you know, I thought, well, you know, you deny him, he will deny you. And I also told this person um, that uh, just the previous day that the main person upstairs was down and we were having a Bible study together. <laughs> you know, uh, not a Bible study, but um, a, a, conversation. a conversation about God. Mm -hmm. A good conversation about our Father. As a matter of fact, that person quoted the Bible verse that I keep in my wallet 24-7. Mm -hmm. um, so, people's attitudes. People's attitudes. And this is what we're dealing with here. Different people's agendas and different people's attitudes. I mean, we all... I mean, what's our purpose here? Isn't our purpose is to learn as much as we can and to... to, to Sabbath, rest with the Lord today, and to to learn from one another, and and then to go out and be able to be that person we want to be, that the Lord wants us to be. But the world is trying to pull us away from that. So who are we going to listen to? You know. Well, today we decide we're going to listen to the Lord, and the Lord hopes that we decide to listen to Him every day. You know. But just like I said earlier, we're in a battle, and this is something that we must do every day of our lives. So he that swore to his own hurt and changeth not. Let me ask you this. Does God change? Does his word change? See, the word we're studying right now, guess what? It's throughout the millennium and eternity. It's not going to be any different. Now, it might be at a more fuller understanding of an ancient language, yes, without uh, some of the, I'll be nice, some of the stuff that's been added, like unicorn and that sort of thing. Um, but even with that, we can understand what that means today if we go to the deeper level of understanding in, in what he's given us through the Bullinger work, you know, meaning wild ox. But verse 5 says, He that putteth not out his money to usury. Now this is the negative side of that. Now what is this talking about? People who stay in debt. In other words, you constantly work and work and work. Uh, a recent uh, situation has happened where I've been ministering to someone. And uh, not, not too far back, uh, they had like $9,000 saved up. 
and they wanted to move, they needed to move, okay, well, they moved. But uh, the fact is, uh, now they're in a situation that all the money's gone, they moved, however, uh, they're, they're having difficulties in dealing with not having any money right now. Now, the Lord has come along and given them an opportunity, at least this one individual, of moving somewhere where they can afford where they're living. Because I was told within 30 days, the money will be gone and the mortgage will be, or not mortgage, but the rent will be due. And they don't have money to pay it. But they have an opportunity of moving again, even though they just moved, to a place that they can't afford. Okay. Well, to me, doesn't that sound like a no-brainer? Yeah. But see, sometimes when you're so wrapped up in your situation, and this, quite frankly, means you're wrapped up in yourself, you can't see the fullness and the clarity that someone that is walking properly all the time can see. So they'll, they'll make wrong decisions mm. in life. Now, will Father allow you to make a wrong decision? Of course He will, if you're not listening to Him. But let me tell you something, I've, and, and I've been doing this for almost 70 years now. The fact is, if you listen to him and follow him, you're not going to make a wrong decision because it's his decision for you. He will lead, guide, and direct you, and that, that's real stuff. Now, sometimes it's to learn a lesson, yes. <laughs> and we don't like to learn those hard lessons, do we? until we learn that it was best for us. So that's why David and Paul and all of them would say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for that chastisement, because I needed it at the time. Okay. But my point being is this, this thing with money to usury, this isn't talking about those that, um, let's say you got... It's cheaper to get a house. Well, I don't know about today. But it's cheaper to own your own home than it is to go out and rent. You know. So, can someone just plop down what are, I don't know what houses are going for, $250,000 today on a, on a, and up? Um, now, I don't know hardly anyone that can do that. Just open up their bank account and give someone $250,000. But if you are led to purchase that home, you how can you not get into usury? But what kind of usury is it? It's usually you get the lowest, I mean, if you're a, a person who isn't in debt up to their eyeballs, you can usually get a low interest rate and something that, that will benefit you and your family for who knows how many years. That isn't the usury I don't think our father's talking about. I think the usury he's talking about is that, well, you, you want a motorcycle. So you go out here and you buy the best motors, $35,000 motorcycle you can find. And you're paying six, $700 a month. And that takes a big old chunk out of your monthly monthly uh, budget if you even have one at that point. Now that and plus you might even be or credit cards of course. Credit cards 24% interest you know I don't know what are what they are today I guess for bad credit something like that. Usury is basically where you're constantly having to pay and pay and pay and never get out of debt. Yes. I understand what you're saying but I also Remember researching usury, putting your money, putting your money out to usury means you don't lend money to someone and charge them ridiculous interest if they don't pay. You. That is the the Christian way, the the brotherly way. Mm -hmm. Technically, when you, well, it's like my son. 
Um, <laughs> I he recently told me he wanted an aerator. He was going to go out and buy an aerator for the his yard. Well, I I told him I said, well, I got an aerator in my shed over here, and I haven't used it in the last two years. And for the life of me, at this point in my life, I don't think I'm going to use it. So he says, well, how much do you want for it? Now, he knows. I kind of felt insulted a little bit. Because, number one, I said, what what did I say, son? You don't, what? <coughs> you don't, you don't remember? Family. I'm sorry, you don't remember that. You don't charge you family. Don't charge family. Now, some people say, well, I... Yeah, you do. Well, I'm not going to get in that argument. But the fact of the matter is, on something like that, that I have a piece of equipment that I'm not going to use, he needs that piece of equipment. Yeah, I could have sold it for $200 or half of that or whatever it is, half of what he'd have to go out and buy it for. But, uh, I, I, and guess what? I would have done that to anybody in here. Because you're my family. Now, if... Joe Blow and I wanted to sell it and I put it in the I want or whatever, yeah, I would have sold it. But what Don is talking about is that let's say Derek comes over and says, Ron, I you know, just this short this week, I, I uh do you have fifty dollars that I could borrow? I I'll give it back to you, whatever, whatever. And I'd say, Sure, Derek, you know, here's fifty dollars. Now, some people, what Don is talking about, would say, Well, now you need to pay me sixty dollars back, you know, because I'm charging him interest, and that's ten extra dollars a month that you don't get it to me. I think they're actually talking about that, and people that's what like she's talking about. Payday loans. Oh Those yeah. Where you put up your car title loans. Car title loans. They typically target lower income people, and so what you end up doing is being on this revolving door of having to borrow money every week because you paid off last week so now you don't have enough for this. You know what that used to be called? Mm -hmm. Loan shark. Loan sharks. Yeah. Well, and that's what I think this is referring to. It is. So loan sharks are just legal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, it's legal because they have you sign a contract. Mm -hmm. But still ripping people off. Even the government's been trying to get rid of them. That ain't working. But it also says, nor nor taketh reward against the innocent. What does that mean? Not taking a bribe. That's what it means, not taking a bribe. Does anybody take bribes today? I'm sure some people do. We don't. Well, I'd say about probably 95% of the people standing <laughs> behind a pulpit today take a bribe. Because they're teaching false doctrine, and they're getting paid for it. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. What does that mean, never be moved? <laughs> they're so wrapped up in their self and what they're doing, you're never going to get them out of it. They're never going to come to the understanding of truth. Because they're just so wrapped up in self and, 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 and what they're going through. Let's continue in Psalm 16. This says, Mitchdam of David. Now, this Mitchdam means golden psalm. You ever, we have a term today, that's golden. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I consider the entire Word of God golden, but um, some of it's hard to get through. I was listening to Murray uh, last night, and he was doing um, numbers. And he was talking about how many sheep were, were they were getting here and how many cattle they were getting. And it was going on and on about so ten thousands of sheep and thousands of oxen and, and then this other thousands and thousands of sheep and more oxen. And, and I'm thinking, God forgive me. I had to repent on this. I said, do I really need to hear this, you know, right now? Mm -hmm. But if I didn't need to hear it, I wouldn't have been there listening to it. And unfortunately, I did turn the channel for a while, didn't I? Mm -hmm. um, but there's just certain things that, um, to me, when, when you get into the numbers of things, 
and it's repetition, 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 it's hard to, to sit there and do that kind of study. But it's necessary. Why is it necessary? For the history. Okay. Well, why is it important for us to know how many oxen Israel got for defeating an enemy? You know what? There's a lot of stuff we need to know, and I can't really tell you why. One day I'll know why, but not today. Well, I'll answer the same thing with what you just said a different way. Because it's there. Mm. <laughs> well, if God didn't want it there, it wouldn't be there. So I think it's important to 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 understand. It's also discipline of of doing it word by word, verse by verse. That's right. Because no some what. things. Do you read this one time and always remember it and no. never forget it and have it locked in, or do you have to read it over and over again? True. We've been, it's we've been, how you learn through repetition. I think we've been coming here at least 10, maybe more years than that, I don't remember, but at least 10. Think about how many times we've been through this Bible. And the thing that always gets me is, when we start a book, Ross will calculate how long we'll be in that book. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's a couple of years. Oh, absolutely. You know, so... You never really stop reading the Bible. No, you don't. But some things are, it's like reading a novel. Some things are exciting yeah. and, and, you know, all this action going on. And then the other seems to be kind of an even kill, just mellow yellow kind of thing going on. Or just drags yeah. on and on and on. And where I, I think, to answer my own question, I think what the Lord wants from us is that we're excited about both. Mm. you know that we want to keep learning or it might just be just plain old Monday that's why some people start reading the Bible in the book of Revelation mm. they do and then they go <laughs> well I don't understand it <laughs> well <laughs> they want to learn the end before the day the beginning well yeah they do <laughs> you know just like uh, questions that I'm asked from some people they ask me some really in depth questions, which is a great question, but sometimes I'll ask them a very milk question, which tells me that they didn't do their homework. Mm. So how are they going to know anything about the end if they don't know anything about the beginning? It'll be like mm. watching the end of a movie before you start in the beginning. Mm. Same principle. <laughs> um, or verse? Verse 1. Verse 5. Okay. Verse, Psalm 16. David says, Preserve me. What does that mean, preserve me? Keep me. Keep me going. You know, because David was on the right path here. He had the heart of God. And, and the fact is, David at this point had learned, well, I've learned a lot. I've failed a lot. I've repented a lot. But I've learned a lot. Preserve me. Preserve that 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 hunger, that worship, that craving for you. Preserve me, O God, for in Thee do I put my trust. And he now he's proclaiming this to God, and he's not a liar. David was not a liar, and the fact is, Father knew his heart. He knew his mind. And when he says, I put my trust in, 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 in thee, that's exactly what he did. In what category? In everything. Now, that didn't mean he didn't fall short at times. Just because a person falls short. And this, here, this is important to know and learn. Just because you blow it from time to time does not mean that you don't love your father. But what you do do when you do blow it you're quick to repent. A lot quicker than you used to be. Absolutely. And it's important to know and understand that. See, a lot of people think that when they fail, that that it's over. You know, they can't get right with God. You can always get right with God, providing you do things His way. That makes you a righteous person. 
A lot of people say, oh, don't call me righteous. Why? If you're doing what's right. <laughs> just because just because you fail and, and, and are weak in the flesh, and we all fall short of the glory of God, I mean, if you don't think you you are, then you're you're kidding yourself. But the thing is, when you when you're right with God, you're right with God, and and praise His name for it. That's why it says in verse two, "O oh my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord." Why would David say, "My soul has said to the Lord"? Because that's what is our, accurate. It is accurate, but what is the soul? For, for some people on YouTube being. who may not understand what, what he's talking about here. Your innermost heart, your innermost thought, your innermost feeling, your innermost Why feeling. Why is it innermost? Because it's what's been with you from the beginning. Ah. It's what the Lord gave you. Yeah. What God created. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a personal conduit mm -hmm. to you and to him. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like you have two bodies. <laughs> and that's what Paul talked about. Mm -hmm. Not getting so heavily into it right now, but you got a... a, a terrestrial. Okay. Yeah. Terrestrial, terrestrial, which is what? <laughs> Flesh. And a... Celestial. Which is? Spirit. Two bodies. Simultaneously. Now you can feed one and starve the other. Or you can feed them both. Because you got to eat, right? We all eat. How do I know that? Because we're all here. <laughs> we didn't eat, didn't drink, we wouldn't be here. Right. Well, you got to feed that soul. That personal soul in each and every one of us that God himself created. You know. So he says, O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee. This is a poor translation. Thank you. This is a poor translation. It does not read this in the manuscripts. In the manuscripts it says, I have no goodness without thee. Ah. That's what it says in the manuscripts. Now this is a, a translation in, into English. And I can't tell you why it's there other than the Kenites were the scribes at one point in time <laughs> or the other. So is that the reason? But that is written in the manuscripts. I have no goodness without thee. That makes a lot more sense, don't it? Mm -hmm. Verse 3. But to the saints, who are the saints? Set aside ones. But to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Now what is, what is David saying here? David is zealous for all those who do works for God. That's why it's called the Golden Psalm. He's, he's, he's zealous for all those that get it right, that do it right. He's passionate for them. Let's not forget at one point where David was saying, there's nobody right, nobody good. Well, he was, de he was dealing with the world. But there's also another side of that coin. God has, has brought forth his saints in every single generation throughout time. Their sorrows, verse 4 says, what? The saints have sorrows? You better believe it. Their sorrows shall be multiplied. But listen to this, that hasten after another God. You say, well, wait a minute now. He's talking about saints, and now he's talking about those that hasten after another God? What does that say? Does this not disprove to the people that say, once saved, always saved? Beloved, you can fall short, and you could stay short. It's your decision. You can turn away from God at any given moment of time, just as at any given moment of time you can turn to God. But the thing is, and I've seen this happen more than not, that once, fought, once you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and He enlightens you and you start maturing, you start growing, and you start doing what's right, and for whatever reason, you turn from that. 
it gets really, really rough. And it should. Why? Because at one point you trusted. You put your whole heart in the Lord. And then you turn from him. And he, he gives you what? He gives you blessings. He gives you love. He gives you compassion. He gives you all these wonderful attributes. And you're saying, God, bless him. You know, I mean, Lord, I love you. You know, like last Sunday I was seeing a, a woman with her hands up in the air and just praising God, who at one point was a thief. You know, but I've also seen people who had turned from that, turned to God, and then went back to being a thief. And they were miserable wretches. And that's the way it should be. What? It's, that's just such a frightening thought. It's, it's frightening. And it's akin to the, to the phrase, depart from me, I never knew you. And it always strikes that little ping of fear in my heart when I hear it. <laughs> and that's probably not anywhere close to what you've been talking well, about. Well, sure it is. <laughs> what do you think it also means to fear the Lord? Because mm. you know where the power is. To fear falling away is a, a, is a real fear. Well, if, all right, on that pretense. If a person falls away, why did they fall away? Because for whatever reason, they turned from God. They chose. See, they made their own decision to turn from God. Now, granted, at, at first it might just be the most innocent, just not even thinking about situation that they're going through. However, they stayed on that path. Mm. That's why our Father talks about a narrow path that we're to stay on. That narrow path of righteousness to, to when, we, when we screw up, when we mess. And I'm not talking about if we make mistakes and we need to repent. I'm talking about we make mistakes and we don't repent. Mm -hmm. And we make more mistakes and more mistakes and more. And it's just like, it's just like a spiraling out of control. It's like being caught in a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. But even no matter how big that whirlwind is, you can always have a way out. See, that's that's the beauty of our Father. No matter how far you drifted away from Him, He'll take you back. But it's got to be on His terms, mm -hmm. not yours. You know. So when you're hasting, hasten after another God. What is another God? Well, it's called adultery or idolatry. And what does that mean? That means anyone or anything that you put before God. What, whatever that is, you, you just, you just, like, you, you, you're all being led to be here today. Well, you decided, you know, just like me today, I kept hitting that snooze alarm. Kept hitting that, <laughs> kept hitting that snooze alarm. But, you know, I so wanted to be here. Now, if, let's say I hit that snooze alarm, I said, Donna, call everybody, tell them I'm tired, or tell them I'm sick, or tell them, you know, I would have forsaken my father, you know. Or, well, today's a, turns out it was raining, and now sun's out, beautiful day. Well, I decide I'm going to get up, and I'm going to hop on that motorcycle, and I'm going to take off. You know. Donna, call everybody. <laughs> Tell them I was called in to work. <laughs> well, I just put I just put a god and a false mm -hmm. deity before me. You also lied too. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, guess what? When you put other gods in front of you, you start becoming a liar. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Because you got to lie your way out of a lot of things if you were walking right. And the main one you're lying to is your father. And he don't take kindly to it. Especially when he's given you everything. You say, well, what has he given me? He's given you his life. His only begotten son, he died for you. And you're not willing to spend a little time with him? So their sorrow shall be multiplied. 
their drink offerings, verse 4 says, they're, they're, uh, that hasten after another god, their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, David says, nor take up their names into my lips. I'm not even going to deal with them. I'm not going to think about them. I'm not going to have anything to do with them. But this is also talking about not falling away. Mm. Because just as easy it is to go to our Father, He's made it just as easy to turn away from Him. Now, there's ones that can't turn away from Him. Do you know who they are? Elect. The very elect. Very elect yeah. mm -hmm. their, their sole purpose is whatever God brought them forth here to do. And they can't turn away from what they're, they're destined to do. They just can't do it. You say, well, that's not free will. Mm. It's not. But that's not all of us. But that's his very elect. I don't know about that, because if it was in the first earth age, they had a choice of what to do at that point in time. And they made their choice. Exactly. And they did not fall away. Exactly. So they did They're have They're not a going to fall. Then, I'm talking about in the flesh. Well, flesh age, I'm talking that's about. That's what I'm saying. We carry over. The very elect do yeah. not. Nope. The very elect do not have. I'm saying they had a choice in the beginning. In the beginning. Their choice. I'm talking about the flesh the age. age. Listen to my lips. Yes. The <laughs> flesh age, yes. I'm talking about. Not the eternity. Right. We, we, whatever we did in the first earth age, doesn't it carry through to the flesh age? No, it words, can. If we, if we stood, we have that It choice. can, but also on the same coin, the opposite side, a Kenite that we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. The Kenites, sons of Cain, lineage to lineage, right? And the fact is, even a Kenite can be saved right. today. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about the very elect that God has a point and a plan for them on this planet right now to do a certain thing for him. And they're not going to turn from that. I don't think they'll turn for it, but I still think they would have the choice. I don't think they would ever, ever would because I think they're going to walk in the righteousness just like they did in the first or second. Yeah, it'd, be like, it'd be like Paul being Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul was very zealous against the Christian church. But the fact is, he was struck down on that road to Damascus. He didn't have no choice on that road to Damascus. Christ called him because he knew who Paul was or would become. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're saying, well, Paul could have said, Christ, I ain't following him. I don't think so. I really don't. I, I believe that there's, there's certain, and, and I can't prove that. I can't prove that, but yeah. I believe that there's certain, and I don't want to spend more, much time on this because I can't prove it, but the, there's certain individuals that God knows that he can depend on no matter what. What about Jonah? Same with Jonah. That's what I'm saying. Yes, but why he did Jonah say no? <laughs> why did Jonah want to say no, though? you got to know the whole story. Well, he didn't yeah. want to deal with the Ninevites. No, it's not that he didn't want to deal with them. He knew by the word of God that the Ninevites would eventually turn from God and 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 pull away from Israel. Mm -hmm. So he didn't want to go to the Ninevites and save them because he knew what, what they were going to do eventually. But God gave them an opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ or to accept our Father and they did for a long period of time. But Hence is Jonah, I don't believe, had a choice. He even said, throw me overboard. Kill me. <laughs> uh-uh. Didn't have a choice. He was going to get done what God wanted to get done. Enough said on that. We could, we could spend the rest of our time forever on this one. But that's why it says in verse 5, the Lord, I'm to start. Good night, nurse. I'm, I'm past my time. It's about 15 after, I think. All right, good. Verse 5. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. What is, what is David declaring here, really? That he's one of the elect. 
Thou maintainest my lot, my, my portion. He maintains that for David. That's why it says in verse 6, The lines are fallen unto me in, a, in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage or beautiful possession. Now, 16.6 refers to the measuring, you know, the plumb bob, mm -hmm. the measuring of land by lines and appropriating each part to the proper owners. That's what this is talking about. Mm -hmm. He's talking about God's elect. What do God's elect inherit? Anybody remember? Anything that is God's. Everything that is God's. But not everybody inherits the same thing. They're given portions, remember? As it says in the book of Revelation, get your own piece of land and and a uh, place to... Uh, what are you looking for? I'm, I'm wondering about that because isn't there a place in Revelation that says do not give them any portion because they will... In, in That's the care. elect. Yeah, okay. The elect, yeah. you don't give them portion because the portion... Their portion is God. Right. So you own whatever he owns. Mm -hmm. You say, well, he owns it all. Well, that's true. But we're talking about the eternity now. Everyone that will make the eternity will be given, you know, what is it? How is it written? Uh, uh, two mules and a barn. Yeah, <laughs> two mules and a barn. No, it's not written that. But you're, you're, given, you're given your own land that you'll never have to give up on. I guess it's habitation. Yeah. Habitation. Yeah. But um, basically telling us that Christ's portion lies in pleasant persons. And in other words, those that are washed in his blood. As David, David, you say, well, how was David washed in the blood of Jesus? He was washed in the blood of God. And as, as what do I mean by that? Is that God brought him forth to the understanding of Jesus Christ, even though he never met Jesus Christ. Although he did meet Jesus Christ being God. That's why it says in verse 7, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins, what are reins used for? To guide and direct. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. Now, I could ask the question, is God your reins? Is God leading, guiding, and directing you? He is if you allow him to. You know, but if you don't want him to, if you want to do things your own way, he's going to allow that to happen as well. So in verse 8 it says, I have set the Lord always before me. Now let's not overlook how this all started. If you want to be in a tabernacle with the Lord, you know, who shall dwell in his holy hill, dwell with him. You set the Lord always before you. Because he is at my right hand. What does that mean? He is my power. I shall not be moved. I'm not going to move from this understanding. I'm not going to move from this direction. Now who wants to move you from this direction? The Antichrist. Now and therefore, that's why my heart is glad. And my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. And this tells us what the outcome is when you, when you know this. When you believe it with all your heart. That you have rest. You have peace. In the middle of a world that doesn't have any right now. You have it. That's why you're considered a peculiar people. They're not, why aren't you on my agenda? Because I don't want to be on your agenda. I want to be on my God's agenda. Well, I'm following God. Really? Who'd you hate today? <laughs> now, can God's people hate? Mm -hmm. Yes? No. Yeah. Who, who does God's people hate? Sin. Or not who. What does God's people hate? Sin. Sin. God hates sin. And, and really, to be but truthful, love the sinner. To be truthful, uh, a child of God can get it in their heart to hate someone, and then there ensues the struggle for forgiveness. 
Well, then they repent and get over it. Well, yeah, but I'm saying it's possible. Well, yeah, it's possible to sin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ten, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. And that's what will happen if you continuously hate. Now, that's not a literal hell. That means your life is like hell. Mm -hmm. Has anyone here ever gone through hell? <laughs> I sure have. And it wasn't a literal hell. As far as burning and all this and that and the other, it is some false teachers teach about. But it was hell on earth. Because I wasn't listening. I wasn't trusting. I wasn't obeying him. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one. Who's this, oh, this is David talking about God's holy one. Well, who's his holy one? Jesus Christ. To see corruption. He's talking about Christ not seeing corruption. Tell me he's not being a foreseer, a prophet at this moment. That God gives him that vision. Eleven, thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. You want joy in life? He said, well, how can I be in his presence? You can be in his presence because you are his tabernacle. And he is supposed to be dwelling with you right now. And you can be in this world with all the negatives and everything and have complete joy in your heart. At thy right hand, at thy power, there are pleasures forevermore. You got the power of God with you. You have joy in your heart. You have love in your heart. You have compassion. You have all the good attributes that our Father has. Because He is in you, and you are in Him. And that's His goal, and that should be our goal. To become one with him. And you can do it today. If you're not. You just got to turn from your self-proclaimed conceived agenda. And become selfless. And allow him to lead God and direct. Now some people say, well I don't want to be led, guided, and directed. I want to <laughs> do things on my own. Right? <laughs> some people, a lot of people are stubborn and prideful. Well, guess what? Those two things have got to get out. The pride and the stubbornness. Because you're never going to achieve the righteousness that it takes. What David's talking about here, what our Father is talking about through David, to be with him forevermore. And that's his goal for you. He created you to be with him forever. And he's going to do whatever it takes, providing making you, he's going to do whatever it takes to show you the right path. Any questions today? What a blessing it is to be a part of this family. You know. And he so, so much wants us to be with him for eternity. And he's going to give you an opportunity to achieve that. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for the blessings of your word, your truth that comes forward, Father, just flows freely to us because we want to know not what man says but what you have to say and your way of achieving all things and what a blessing it is to be a part of that i pray for everyone here today and all those on youtube and all our families that you watch over us lead us guide us and direct us and forevermore we will give you all glory honor and praise for we do love you with all our hearts with all our minds, with all our strengths, and with all our souls. In Yeshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory.